Thank you. Thank you. My name is Fumio Simpo, Fumio Simpo, Professor at Yale University. Uh, I don't know whether I'm able to solve the problem, mm -hmm. but uh, may I reconfirm, uh, first of all, may I reconfirm the current Japanese uh, data protection system, personal information protection law, uh, because to talk about the big data and the privacy issues and also the personal information protection issues in Japan. Japanese legal system, particularly uh, personal information protection law, is a little bit complicated. Actually, not a little bit, very complicated. Therefore, may I reconfirm and also may I introduce the such very complicated legal system of Japan. Next slide, please. And first of all, uh, regarding the history of personal data protection law uh, system in Japan, uh, Japan is a member of the OECD and its legislation is influenced by the OECD privacy guidelines. After the OECD privacy guidelines were introduced in 1980, the OECD guidelines became the model for regulation in Japan. However, le uh, local governments worked quickly to adopt their own personal data protection regulation before the enactment of the OECD guidelines. The all earliest uh, such regulations in Japan were regulations concerning personal data protection management of computers, 
introduced some, uh, some local governments. It's around 1970, yeah, 1970. And followed by privacy protection regulated by such local governments, uh, top metropolitan government uh, in area, big area, such local government ordinance has been enacted in around 1975. So, the because of such municipal uh, law, and, and now we have 1,800 local governments in Japan, and they have its ordinance and protection and personal information. So, this signifies that it is well known fact in that the Japan that the OECD privacy guidelines were considered when established its own personal data protection regulations. So, after adapting the guidelines, an administrative agency set up a privacy protection research group. And finally, the first privacy law, it is called the law relating to the personal information protection stored on an administrative agency computers in 1988. After adapting the recommendation, uh, there were the, the regulations of private, private sector regulation, but there were no law for the protection of personal information in, in, in the private sector. So the private sector, regarding the private sector, under the jurisdiction of the former Ministry of Internal Trade and Industry, I just called it MITI, adopted guidelines and followed by the telecommunication industries also enacted several guidelines. However, guidelines for voluntary controls began to be formulated in the late 1980s. At present, guidelines issued by administrative organs include the OECD guidelines and Japanese industrial standard, it is called JIS, GIS. So these guidelines have been voluntarily prescribed also by industry groups and for this. In, the, in addition, certification systems are presently being implemented in the private sector. Uh, this is known as the Privacy Mark System, PMS. The accreditation of the Privacy Mark System requires third party organization to object objectively evaluate the compliance of private enterprises with all relevant laws and regulations, including JISQ 1500. Uh, it is the name of the, this standard. The PMS is an effective tool which allows private enterprises to demonstrate that they are in compliance with the law and they have voluntarily established the personal information protection management system with a high level of protection. So currently around 10,000 Japanese companies are, are recorded as using the PMS. Next please. So in Japan, the consideration of personal data protection law or in the private sector uh, on the national level uh, has been performed by the government since July 1999. And finally, in 2003, uh, this law has been, uh, has been enacted. A personal protection, personal data protection law was finally enacted in May 2003. At the same time, an administrative agency personal data protection law and independent administrative corporation personal data protection law took effect. This new administrative agency personal data protection law was complete overhaul of the 1988 protection of personal data stored on administrative agency computers law. Um, and next please. A second generation of legislative efforts considered the protection of personal information in a, se uh, as a separate, separate and fundamental right distinct from the right to privacy. Therefore, when we, uh, we talk about the current status regarding the protection of personal information and the right to privacy in Japan, the, this law has no uh, provision regarding the protection of privacy. This law only provides the protection of personal information. Therefore, fundamental right, as a fundamental right, uh, the right to privacy, the, it is the distinct from the right to privacy. So therefore, the Japanese data protection legislative structure is based on three main laws, 
related to the protection of personal information enacted on May 30, 2003. So the name is, as you are, you are able to see that, the display, the Protection of Personal Information Protection Act. And also there are five laws that were for, for administrative organs and, and also uh, administrative organs and, and also uh, related to law. And next slide, please. And this is the very complicated Japanese legal system. At the top, the, from the top, the basic policy, the basic policy and the, and the law that I have already mentioned, and then administrative organs and individual laws, and furthermore, personal data protection regulation. And also, there are many guidelines based on this law. So, uh, in, in order to save time, uh, please refer to the PowerPoint slide entitled this uh, overall outline of personal data protection law, uh, which will be displayed information concerning the current Japanese protection scheme. And next slide, please. And also, this is more complicated Japanese guideline regarding the protection of personal information. So, currently, the Consumer Commission reviewed the the Data Protection Act with a view to incorporating possible amendment into the Personal Information Protection Act. However, uh, as you know, Japan does not have any supervisory authority sufficient to meet with the application standard of the International Conference of Data Privacy Commissioners. With regard to the enforcement of the Act on the protection of personal information, the competent minister in charge of each ministry has the authority to enforce laws concerning the proper handling of protection of personal information. For this reason, guidelines have been established under the Act on the Protection of Personal Information for each business field to be acted upon by ministries and agencies with jurisdiction over these businesses. The basis for formulation and the review of the guideline and the agency with jurisdiction over this business. So it is said that there are 42 guidelines set by each ministry, which have been established in 24 fields. So even if the business, uh, the private company, and also I'm an expert of privacy in Japan, uh, it is very difficult to find the suitable guideline for, to, for, for compliance of law. So therefore, this is one of the problem of the enforcement and also the, the legal system regarding the current personal information protection uh, in Japan. So these fields field cover specific industry subsectors. And at the same time, various issues have emerged recently, such as, for example, behavioral targeting marketing, BTA, and cloud computing and smartphone. So these are being examined and on the on a uh, daily basis. So next slide, next slide, please. And, and, and also the basic policy, uh, Article 7, Clause 1, requires the government to provide a basic policy concerning the protection of personal information and to attempt consistent enforcement of the measure to secure its protection. The policy further provides that each minister should enact or revise guidelines. Therefore, there are many guidelines that uh, have been enacted. Uh, following these various ministries uh, must immediately begin developing a common minimum requirement <coughs> for the handling of personal information based on the law for each business sector and then establish the means for impacting uh, information and the advice implement the guideline. And next slide, please. And next slide is, uh, next presentation sheet is just for introducing the recent topic regarding uh, the smartphone. The presentation sheet that I've already mentioned is just the Japanese complicated legal system regarding the personal information protection and you know slide one and the next slide is the current effort regarding the Japanese guideline one of the guidelines this guideline has been just uh, 
open to public. So it is called Smartphone Privacy Initiative and its progress. Okay, next slide, please. Um, this is a slide of the improvement in, in increasing the number of smartphone users in Japan. And next slide, please. And therefore, there are many problems uh, of course, and particularly uh, by using the smartphone. So therefore, the study group on consumer issues with ICT services, and also working group on user information sent to smartphones. So I'm, all, I'm also a member of this working group. So we have considered and had an investigation, investigation regarding that. Smartphone usage and related to its problem. And next slide, please. So, as you know, the, uh, regarding the structure of smartphone services, so the, this is an example of the party related to user information of smartphones uh, from the, top the content service layer, platform layer, network layer, mobile layer, user. And so, therefore, the, there is a difference between smartphone services and the former uh, cellular phone. Uh, do you know the word Galapagos cellular phone? It is, uh, it is only used in Japan. So the name of the Galapagos is uh, the uh, uh, name of the island. So the, currently, the Japanese cellular phone, the standard of Japanese cellular phone is different from world standard. Therefore, it is called Galapagos uh, cellular phone. So the difference between such Galapagos cellular phone and smartphone is uh, such a layer model of the, the smartphone user information. Next slide, please. And this is an example of the current situation regarding the surrounding information collection by application and its purpose. So there is the research result regarding the unfair, maybe unfair and the deceptive usage of information, personal information uh, collected by application through the application of smartphone. So by the analysis of about 1,000 applications by KDDI, around the laboratories, uh, about 56, uh, around 60 percent applications have information collection modules, and at the, at the same time, such module collect uh, a most wide collection, collection of information regarding the device ID, location, data, or stuff like that. So this is an example of the research re result regarding the unknown wide and the deceptive way of collecting personal information through the smartphone. Next slide, please. Uh, Professor Shempo, yeah. Chairman has called Yeah. So, um, just to introduce that. The, so, therefore, Ministry of Internal Affairs Communication issued the Smartphone Privacy Initiative. So, this is the fundamental principle. Next slide, please. And in detail, the fundamental principle, please refer to the other. Uh, there, we, you are able to uh, find uh, the Smartphone Privacy Initiative on, on the website of MIC. Next slide, please. And the latter, the, these are the in details of the Smartphone Privacy Initiative. So each privacy uh, principles, and for example, creation privacy policy. And next slide, next slide, please. And specific issues of measures undertaken by other private businesses. Yes, thank you. Uh, time is up. So, therefore, th this effort, th this is a wonderful example of the current Japanese effort regarding the uh, handling of personal information. And thank you, thank you for listening.